Hello everyone, my name's Bob Mitch and welcome back to some more Star Citizen. This video is going to be your guide to the abandoned colonial outposts that have been added in 3.17.2. There are several of them around Microtech and whilst I don't know where all of them are, I'm going to show you where the ones that I do know where they are, if that makes sense, and what you can expect to find there, loot wise, the artifacts and things that you can expect to find there, and enemies, risks, threats, that sort of thing. So we're just going to get straight into it. What do you want to take to one of these things? So I'm on Port Trasler, which is what I've made as my base around uh, doing these things because I have been scoring and just absolutely annihilating these things since they were introduced on the PTU because I've been having so much fun with them. And it's the same as if you were going to do any kind of wreck spelunking or I would say if you were going to do bunkers because the NPC, the NPC threat is there and they will kill you. They are very accurate. I think I've put it in my videos before of people just getting headshot after they've taken out a couple of NPCs and then the rest of them just clean them up. So I'm wearing armor wise. I'm wearing a Novikov suit. This is the Nine Tails one from the Siege of Horizon. The first Lieutenant drops it if you're wondering where it's from. I just love it much like the Pembroke suit I had on the other day and I've got the Expo CitizenCon 2019 stuff on to match it because you don't get a matching helm in a backpack with this one. Anyway, any kind of armour will do, you just have to keep in mind that some of these outposts, in fact two of the three that I'm going to show you, are right near New Babbage and thus it is very, very cold. So your character will start to get affected by the cold if you're not in some kind of decent armour. Medium armour will do, heavy armour is better. I like going there in a Novikov suit because then it's kind of... RP like and the, the cold just doesn't bother you if you're in one of these things so there's no risk of losing aim or anything like that. So armor you need weapons so I've got sidearm I've got my coda and I would strongly advise for doing these outposts is taking a sniper rifle. Um, these AO3s that you get with the pledge store stuff if you've got them are fantastic uh, you know an arrowhead sniper rifle arrowheads are everywhere uh, any kind of sniper rifle will do but sniper rifle is highly advised because then you can pick these guys off from a distance and they won't even know you're there they won't even engage you once you start taking their friends down survivability you're going to need a paramed medical device you're going to need some med pens you don't need refills i've never had to take a refill i just strongly advise taking something that you can heal yourself with in case you do get shot by npcs or players because players could be at these as i've said about my rec ones i imagine there might be more players at these if they start watching this video and for some reason i don't know what it is especially at the one on the other side of the planet which i think is going to be my first one i'm going to show you because we're on the dark side of the planet here at new babbage the terrain can just randomly hurt you for some reason. I don't know if the terrain just glitches or bugs out, but you'll just take a step forward and you'll take damage um, in some areas of it. In some cases, it just knocks you out completely and you get incapacitated. That has happened a lot to me. <laughs> so there's still a few to work, like tweaks and kinks about these things that they do need to sort out. Um, you can bring some food and drink if you want, but I can guarantee that you will find food and drink down there to keep your character going uh, hunger and thirst wise so that's not really a big issue so medical stuff ammo gun suit and we're ready to go so let's yank out a ship and we'll go to the first location when you're doing these things much like if you were going to do the wreck spelunking it's advisable to bring a ship that has a bed in it because then once you finish looting the sites and you finish doing what you've done then you could just get in the bed and you can server hop and instantly be at the next location with the same quirk again that I'll probably end up showing you that you should really get your ship to take off because bed logging tends to it works but it doesn't work quite correctly where your oh, hello who are you where your um, your ship will spawn without landing gear so you'll just sort of disappear and uh, well your ship will disappear anyway and then you have to start back from scratch again so, coming out of Port Tresler, our first location, if we look down at the planet, we can see New Babbage there and all its lights. Turn on your quantum drive and you want to head to Shubin Mining Facility SM0-13, 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 either way. It's right next to the New Babbage marker as soon as you leave Port Tresler. And as we come in, we spin right side up and we can disengage our quantum drive. I'm going to turn it back on just so you can see where the outpost marker is. Here is the outpost marker and then to the left is this lovely tundra biome right here. What you want to do is aim for this yellow peaked mountain here. You don't have to be precise, 
but you want to aim just below it, sort of here. And then go down to the planet. You can see as we're getting closer now, there's already a Pisces here. So we'll see if somebody's already here or not. Oft times you'll come to these places and the ships like this will be abandoned. Either because people have abandoned the mission, or there's just so many reasons they may have died on the terrain. Or the NPCs may just simply headshot them, it's as simple as that. This one is very far away from the outpost though. You can see as we come in the low down here, the outpost is right here. Literally just in front of us. So it's really not hard to miss. If you need extra help, then a good thing to look for is these ridge lines that run along the ground. And it's just inside those. This one's really easy, easy to find. And it's right next to an outpost if you do need to get fuel or whatever. So, pop our landing gear and see if somebody's home. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run through each of these outposts as we do them. So this isn't going to be quick. There's definitely no NPC in that tower. So NPCs on this outpost are fairly simple. There's normally one in the tower. There's normally one on the ground right here by the tower. There's normally one on the ground here. And there's normally one stood up there. There's four or five NPCs in this outpost. Afterwards, it's a case of looting. I'll have a quick scan and see if there is some boxes around, but because that ship's there, I'm going to guess that this place has already been looted. So I may serve a hop, just to prove a point, and then we will um, do a fresh search. I can see one box up there. Okay, so I've bedlogged until I can find a server that uh, had some NPCs on it, so I can show you. And now I'm just going to demonstrate the quirk again about using a ship. So you have to take off when you bedlogged because your landing gear is gone and if you step outside your ship it has a tendency to disappear when you walk a short distance away from it. So you kind of have to get the game to really recognize that your ship has landed on the planet rather than just appeared there out of the ether. So just to make you aware. Anyway, we're now on a server that this place is fresh, there's nobody been here, hopefully the boxes are all good. And the NPCs are all here, so I can show you the NPCs if we don't get blasted around in the wind, just like that. So, I'm going to double around my ship, get out my rifle. As you can see, one in the tower. Slowly move our way around here, we should see this dude stood here. Oh wow, it's like the NPCs have half spawned. Oh. Or moved, because there's one there. Maybe they got startled because of my ship. So I may actually have to be careful here. Oh, there's one. Oh, well, there was one. They are actually moving around. There he is. Sorry buddy, but needs lost. There we go, dealt with. <laughs> Bit of a mixed bag. Right, boxes. So where do we go for boxes when we're on this site? They can spawn sort of all over around here. Um, one of them can spawn inside this little building there up on this shelf. This is why you need a multi-tool because you can maneuver these boxes around as I will show you, if the server doesn't lag. Or I would if it had put my tractor attachment in it from Port Trezler. That's really annoying. <laughs> the server's being a bit janky because Siege of Orison is going on right now on this server. So yeah, you can maneuver these boxes around kind of like a jumping puzzle. One is in there. This looks like the box that someone's got to collect from a collection mission. So be aware that those are happening whilst you're doing this. So, if we go up here, it says my party's disbanded, my ship hasn't despawned, that's a good thing. You can often find a box inside this container here as well. 
I backtrack just a little bit. So we can see up here, this structure here, wow, the, the F key is really janky today. Normally there's one on top of here as well, and there's often one on top of these structures here, and I'll show you how to get on top of them. So you can climb on top of this little bit of concrete, then jump on top of this bit of concrete, and then you can just jump straight up. See, you don't need to use your grab lev tools for these. Same with this, you can drop down here, and then this tank here, you can stand on this corner, and pull yourself up. Once you're on here, you can, if you want to, use a multi-tool and maneuver this thing, or you can stand on this bit of rebar, and there we go, straight up. Easy peasy, and this works for all the sites, so the site is going to have repeated, repeated assets, and uh, that technique works to get up every single one of them, just so you know. Let's see if we can find some of these hidden boxes. So, like I said, it's worth going around everywhere to check, because they do hide these boxes everywhere. There isn't one in there. This site seems to be barren of them so far, even though there's NPCs. Yeah, here's one. So what you're looking for is these white ones. These are the main loot boxes that you'll find all over these sites. And as you can see, we've got some free multi-tools. No tractor attachments. I'll take the colour for one, because I want that one. And what I tend to do right now is when I'm doing these sites, is I do take the dollar vine. It may take a while, but if there's no one else here and you've got all the time in the world, it's well worth it, because doing sort of two or three of these runs can net you 150 200k easy you just fly it back up to port tresler or when you're logged out you know if you set your point to port tresler you just log and um, as soon as you're in port tresler you go to the port tresler admin office and you just sell it there and you make easy quick money there isn't one there sometimes there can be one buried in this corner these structures here are worth checking as well i have never yet found a box in this building but i always check Never seems to be one that spawns in here. Nope. And then in this building, there's one. There's three possible spawns in this building here. So you've got one on the left as you come in. On the left, on the right even, blimey. My brain is all over the place today. It's worth noting these as well, pointedly here, can spawn armour and not random bits of uh, bits and bobs. One can spawn here on this table. And then the third is at the back here, under this table. And more free multi-tools, and I will take the colourful one again. As you can see, you get food and drink as well. So like I said, you don't need to worry about your character starving or going thirsty. Cool. Next is over here, so out in this rubble here. If you look in this corner, you can get a box that spawns in this corner here, just under this little bit of rebar. And then we double back. Same here, checking underneath all the little bits of rubble. One can spawn underneath this board here. It's chosen not to this time. And it can spawn again on the corner here. Again, chosen not to. The last place to check, or the first, depending on your OCD levels. That's just the way I do it. Is to climb up the tower. If the server lets you. There's the NPCs that we've shot. And there's a possible two spawns up here as well. So if we drop down here... Around the back, behind this crate, one can spawn here. If we jump down, you can sometimes get one spawn either on here or on here. But they haven't chosen to do so this time. So yeah, there's a lot of loot boxes that can spawn at this site. This site is definitely the easiest of the three. So when New Babbage is in uh, darkness, so when this is the light side of the planet and New Babbage is during its nighttime phase, this is the place to come because this will be sunlit and for several hours you'll be able to come here and do this repeatedly. So a day on Microtech lasts six hours. So you have three hours of day and three hours of night. So when the sun's here, you can do this for three hours over and over and over and over, and then go and sell or take your stuff back to Port Tresler or wherever. And then when the sun goes down and spawns back over on the other, spawns, rises back on the other side of the planet, you can go and start doing the other one if you want. 
or the other two, although one of them isn't very good. So the two main ones that I choose to do anyway. But yeah, this is definitely the easier of the two, mainly because it's not in a snow biome. So whilst there is a bit of a dust storm going on, it is not a blizzard, which you're about to see will make things a lot harder on the other side of the planet. So let's go and head that way. Okay, whilst doing my own rounds on these, it's time to draw your attention to the main reason these sites are fun, at least for me. Um, little bits of flair. So back in this building here where I showed you the three spawn points, there's one, there's two, and then under this desk, number three. The boxes that you need to be looking out for are these ones. They look like the boxes if you drop armour pieces, like helmets and arms. Uh, they're just rusted and worn, and when you look inside these ones... You often get shed loads of things like drinks, as you can see. But what these carry, apart from a load of comp boards, which is quite funny, so they're like server blades, is the artifacts that have been added in this patch. So the uh, the big Hadesian artifacts that I love that took me so long to find um, spawn in these boxes. So you get lots and lots of drink, as you can see, in big stacks, like nine times, as you can see, I've got several of them here. But here you can see we've got ingots, and in this one we've got two gold ingots. So we've got two of the same artifact in this one, which is a bit boring, but never mind. And then if the server lets us inspect it, you can see that we've got a big gold ingot. So they don't tend to have a lot of monetary value. They're more just sort of cool looking and fun to have. But it's uh, nonetheless why I love doing these. The Hadesian artifacts are why I started doing these, so that the big... Um, sort of glass glowing artifact is why I wanted to start doing these because I think they're very very cool I love the lore behind the uh, the Hades system if you've never looked at it but yeah those are the main things to look for if we find an artifact I will show you or rather if we find a Hadesian artifact I will show you if not I'll have to put my uh, photos in from the last time I found one thank you okay Please visit again. and for outpost 2 the harder one so for this one we want to go direct to New Babbage. I'm going to do this now because the sun is just starting to come up after doing the other ones earlier on. So we're going to head down. I've changed armour so I'm in something a little less valuable <laughs> because this one is this one is a lot more unpredictable than the, uh, the one on the other side of the planet. So there's multiple ways to go about this. As you can see here the city is on my left and the spaceport is on my right with the lights. I can navigate to it from here because I know where I'm going. So for that, in that case, you want to just pan up and follow along and there's a couple mountains. The peaks aren't that obvious at the minute because the sun is still coming up and the site is literally just where my cursor is now. There's a valley around there that you can go into. But if you're new to doing this, I will show you the easier way of doing it. And for this, you need to go down to the spaceport. I'm going to interject in this little segment now that the sun's actually come up a bit more and I've finished. So we can look up from New Babbage about this area that I was just showing you. There's New Babbage, or rather New Babbage Spaceport. And then looking up, we can see the first peak that we go around, or we're about to go around, the second peak that we're about to go around, and right there is the valley where the outpost is in. Back to past Bob. Okay, once we're low enough and you're close to the spaceport as if you're going to dock, the city is straight ahead of you and the spaceport is behind you, you need to look right. And looking right, you'll see a series of peaks on the mountains. And the one you're looking for is the one that's just crossing the cursor now that is obscured by all the snow. So it's pretty much the leftmost peak that starts dipping into the valleys. I pan in again, you can just see it there, so you've got all these peaks, the higher ones, and then there's this one here. Now you can see it clearly, because the snowstorm has kind of abated a bit. It's hit and miss here, because the snow is going to be a big problem, as you will see. As we're approaching this, I should warn you about the multiple challenges. So not only do we have the weather and the climate to contend with in this one, we also have the NPCs, of course. The risk of players coming to this one as well, but you also have a landing pad at this site, which means that NPC dropships can and will come in whilst you're doing this site. So you'll get a Cutlass Black that comes in and tries to drop NPCs off. I have yet to see them work properly where the NPCs disembark. Um, I think there's something in the code that makes it bug out a little bit. If there's a ship here, then the Cutlass will open fire on the ship until the ship is destroyed, but then the NPCs just tend to stay on board 
and then after a while the cutlass just explodes or the NPCs um, the, and the whole thing just disappears it vanishes into the ether so it's just another threat that you have to be aware of I've not seen the cutlass shoot at players but yeah as we swung around that first peak you can see there's a second peak here so there's our first one this is the second one you just want to swing right around both of them on the left hand side and the sun is making it very hard to point out here but if we slow down just to the left here you can see this valley it's hard to make out because of the snowstorm right now and the sunrise but in this little valley here it's a lot clearer when the sun's higher you can just see the outpost starting to appear in front of me now and there's no ship here which is a good thing you could try turning your light on but you genuinely can't see a lot <laughs> so this one is very very hard depending on the weather I can teach you some tips whilst we're hovering around depending on the sunrise over there or the sunset towards the city will angle where you should land because if I land over here where the sun rises if the sun is behind you it is easier to see where everything is if the sun is in your face you can't see five feet in front of you and that makes identifying anything regardless of whether it's players NPCs or buildings damn near impossible so try and land with the sun behind you and move around with the sun behind you so that you can see even further in the blizzard as you will soon see Get blown around again so yeah this place is very 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 blizzardy and strong in the wind you can see the lights for the landing pad over there on the opposite side of the site and the sun is just coming up this does clear occasionally and the storm stops but it's not all that common I'm afraid if we zoom in I can see an NPC in the tower which means that this site has not been visited so again we're gonna go through this site and I'll show you where the NPCs are we have one in this tower here that's him gone if we pan over to the right there's normally two in this area here they are hard to spot because of the weather and everything going on but they are there you have to be very careful here because if you miss the NPCs they will kill you even harder for me right now because the sunlight is sort of behind the mountain so it's hard to identify everything there's another one so there's one that tends to stand on top here and then there's one more that hides down the bottom here he's probably going to be the hardest to spot in the weather but I know he's down there and then apart from the one in the tower which we shot there is two more and they're hiding in this area here by this ruin there's one And then the second one is a bit further over to the left. Like I said, it's going to be really hard to identify these guys. That's why this site is much harder to do. Good keybind, by the way. As you can see, Alt-X makes your character's hand wipe across the visor to clear all the snow and rain. One good one to remember, because you're going to need it here. There's one of our missing NPCs. As you can see the sun is starting to come up and you see what I mean if you're behind the sun you can see further into the distance if you're looking into it it just blinds everything you get snow blinded and you can't see a thing NPC is well and truly hidden in the snow. I know he's out there somewhere. I can hear another one. Oh, there is another one. Maybe he was there instead of over there. Hmm. Maybe he's not here this time. Okay, well, we'll get on with the site then. I'm sure he'll be around somewhere and pop up and we'll hear him start yelling if he hears me. So starting from near the ship where we were back in this corner, you can see that the layout of the ruins are much the same as they are at the other outpost on the cleaner side of the moon, moon, planet. So it's more or less the same sort of spawning locations. You kind of have to search in these 
piles of rubble here. See if you can spot them. Sometimes they spawn, sometimes they won't. I'm going to be very paranoid now looking for that NPC. There's these obstacles here that you can jump up again. There isn't one up there this time. There is one up there, however. Let's give it a loot box. This one's got a few armor pieces in it. Nothing much that I really need at this point. These upper ruins here do have some spawn points, as you can see, but more often than not, boxes aren't here. Well, this one's got a lot of stuff in. Let me check this far one. This one I've never seen a box spawn at. But it's always worth checking. So there's one under the rubble here. Nope. Let me go back to the main site. Checking in this container is worth it. You can see there's one back there. I'm not going to search it because I just want to get around the uh, area to show you guys where they are. See the weather's starting to clear a little bit now so we can see. There isn't one up there. Sometimes there's one in here just like this. More armour. Sometimes there's one inside here. And there is. I'll leave that for now. Again, just to show you guys where they are. Sometimes there can be one trapped under the rubble here. We just have to quickly scan for it. Doesn't look like it this time. There's another one. That one's empty. Sometimes that does happen. Oh, there's another one hidden in the corner, look, they're everywhere at this site today, it's a good thing. There's another armour piece, so that's a paid piece of armour there, so that's a pledge store item, so you can see they can appear in these boxes. Now one of the pe places that people miss in this area is this container, so it's worth checking. I don't think I can see anything in there right now. But we'll move these out of the way anyway. This is why you need a tractor tool. You can use a gun to shoot them as well, but sometimes you can get a box spawn in there. You have to remember that every single one of these spawns can either be one of the loot box items that we're already opening, or it can indeed be the artifact item boxes. So it's important. As the sky has cleared now, and the sun's coming up, I will take a step back, and you can see the entire site now. So this one's splayed out a bit more compared to the one at the Shubin outpost but now we can have a look at the landing site so you can see that a cutlass can indeed come in and land here and uh, we haven't had one turn up yet but we are here quite a while so we'll see if one rocks up basically the trigger is someone being here and if you are here eventually one will rock up um, sometimes if people are flying here I've had it as well sometimes when I've been flying here the cutlass has spawned and decided to chase me rather than come and land here and they are relentless so even if you fly back into the new Babbage zone they will chase you um, even if you get out of radar range they will still continue to pursue you it's actually quite funny I've flown you know a good 20 30 kilometers away back into the new Babbage zone and I mean sort of 30 kilometers back on radar so that the ship is 30 kilometers away from me and uh, the damn cutlass has still followed me you know I, I look back at my screen two minutes later and then the cutlass is hovering next to me it can't shoot me because we're in the armistice zone but it's there <laughs> okay this site's almost done box wise but hopefully just by watching what I'm doing you'll get an idea of where to search and see if you can find your own boxes the last place to check which I always do is the tower It's minus 75 here, which you can see it's well worth wearing the uh, decent armour at least. That's why I like wearing the Novikov suit. I've not mentioned it, I think, yet, but of course if you do need weapons or armour, you can always loot it off the Ninetales guys, because they aren't going to need it anymore. Speaking of, actually, I am low on med pens, so I am going to pinch this dude's. 
There's an artifact box, that's a nice find. So there's nothing here this time, however, on the roof, as I've said at the other site, we've got an artifact box spawn. It's a nice little ending touch. And no big Hadesian artifacts, but we've got a war medal. And we've got a Tevran service marker. The service markers are quite common. But again, you can see masses and masses of drinks, which is always useful. I'm just going to take another stack, because why not? But yeah, that's this site done. So this is uh, New Babbage North, I think. This is probably the best one to call this one. So this is north, sort of northeast of New Babbage. And then we'll go to the other one. So back to the ship. Okay, for the third outpost, and there's a very good reason I've left this one to the last, we are back at the spaceport. But this time we want to head over towards the city because you're going to use a couple of the city's landmarks to help you navigate here. Much like the Twin Peaks that you just flew around to get to the second outpost, as soon as you get towards the HAB building here, you want to look to your left. And on the peaks, just outside the city limits, you'll see that there is a bunch of towers. You want to fly between those two towers to get to the next one. So that you're roughly heading a, a direction of 265 on your compass. Is the best way I can put this, because this one is a lot harder to find. I've left this one to the last because I've not had a lot of look at this one, if I'm honest. There is barely any NPCs there. I've never seen NPCs actually spawn at the place. I've seen dropships come in, so again, dropships can land at this one at good risk. Um, but it never seems to have many boxes. Um, maybe I'm just rubbish at finding them on the server that I've been on, but this outpost here is not as varied as the other two, so it doesn't have as much buildings. It's still a cool place to visit, don't get me wrong, but uh, yeah, it doesn't have as much variety as the other two do. So you want to fly out here for about 60 kilometers, roughly. There we go, and then just across this plain here, where this is forest, you can see there's a little sloping mountain-ish thing off to the left here. And you can see that there is another of those Microtech towers just on the left. Closer. So, even I still have trouble finding this one, so you may forgive me for this taking a few minutes. <laughs> this one that I don't come to very often, I prefer to go to the other two, but I know where it is, so I may as well show you guys where it is in this video. As we come down and over the hill, you can see that just ahead of us there is a giant ice lake. And on the edge of the ice lake, there is a bunch of these little outcroppings that sort of dot its outer edges. So I'm referring to these things here. Where you can see the black rock. And if we stop. I know that the outpost is just around here, so it should be pretty much below us now. There she blows straight ahead. I can't believe I missed that for a second. So yeah, there we go. Took a moment, but as you can see, there's the outcroppings at the edge of the lake. 
and the outpost is running pretty much parallel if you look behind you to the tower that's on the top of the mountain you see how that one is a kind of easy to spot when you know where it is but when you're searching for it the first time I will not blame you if it takes a few minutes so uh, yeah just something to keep in mind now let's go and have a look down at this one as I've said this one just doesn't seem to be as varied and as much fun or interesting as the other one so but we'll still go and have a look you can see that there's a lot less here okay so here we are same snow blindness issue as before if it gets really blizzardy then you won't be able to see a lot but it doesn't look like NPCs are here. Like I said, I've never seen NPCs at this one. It just tends to be a place for the um, box collection missions, like the retrieval ops, um, where the box can spawn, because I have seen the boxes here for people to come and pick them up. And obviously you'll get a marker for it then. So it's worth checking for the missions if you do want to come to one of these, and uh, you may get them. But I've, the, the missions are snapped up so fast by people when they join servers. It uh, never really helps to see them. Right, let's have a look. No NPCs, I haven't seen a box yet. They do kind of spawn in the same kind of locations, you have to just scout around, around the floor, around the rubble. There's only one definite place I know one spawns, which is kind of boring. Again, is why I left this one to the last. But I will sweep the whole area just for your guys' sake. Anything up there? Yeah, lots of cool boxes and things inside this building. Like someone building a little fallout shelter in the snow, but not one of these is interactable, unfortunately. <laughs> so they're all bust. The only place I know a box does spawn is down in this little silo. I assume it's a silo. Or an entrance to an old mine or something along those lines. Oh, there's one here. That one I've never seen before. The more you know. This one's got some dollar vine in it. I'll have that. Okay. That's one good thing. And then if we move around to this component here that looks like it's fallen in. It's not here on this one, so it appears to have moved. All around here. And a box spawns just under that little door there. So it looks like there's two spawn locations I found for boxes now for this site. So, But as you can see, this site's a bit of a bust compared to the others. So, there we go. Three locations to go and find all these rare artifacts and the bits and bobs that you uh, want to pick up if you're going for these rare loot. Well, not really rare loot pieces, other. They're just cool flares to have. They're not cool guns or cool armor. They're just nice little touches. And like I said, I really hope they do more with the Hadesian artifacts. I'm trying to collect more of the big ones to see if they do do something and they've added it as a kind of fun Easter egg. But the, uh, the, the large pristine ones are exceedingly rare. I've been doing this ever since the patch landed, just sweeping these. Even with Jump Town and Siege of Orism going on, because people will be doing those. So it's a good chance to jump into these when people aren't coming to them. Well, not as many people anyway, with the increased server cap. Um, and I've only found one. So they are exceedingly rare to find, unless you're incredibly lucky like Ollie was on his first reach. <laughs> when he went to one of these outposts. So... Either way, there you go. Three outposts, the Colonial Outposts on Microtech. I really, really hope this was helpful. Let me know if you found anything more interesting or if you have found something that I have missed because uh, I would very much like to know. Other than that, thank you very much. Thank you for watching, everyone, and I hope you enjoyed. If you like this and think I deserve it, please give it a like. Consider subbing if you fancy sticking around. If you're thinking of taking part in the game, feel free to use my referral code on screen or click the link below for bonus in-game money that helps me out as well. See you in the next one.